back. Is this live? Yeah, I'm not live. This is video recording. Oh, just video recording? Just recording. All right. Brandon awesome. Shorty Rice, y'all know what it is. All right, <laughs> awesome, awesome. They'll do the rest. Uh, yeah, we're about to go live. As soon as this thing says we're live. Thank y'all, by the way, for another good time. We are live, Muffers. All right. Welcome to Deliciously Nothing. This is Reverend Muffers. <laughs> and uh, this is El Pono Clasco. Uh, returning guest, we have Brandon Shorty Rice. And uh, new guest, uh, we have uh, Christian. No, Keanu, Keanu Hall. Keanu, Keanu Hall. Hall. All right. Uh, Keanu Reeves, that's what we're going to call him. Keanu Reeves. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, uh, I guess Brandon. I get to crack it open. Get to crack it open. Do I even know how to do this? Am I allowed to do this? My age limit. I mean, I think it's a height requirement. Oh, God right. damn! <laughs> like, like I don't even think I'm allowed to have this now. The state of Tennessee says I don't even probably allowed to have that. But guess what? I'm not allowed to have a gun, so somebody's gonna have to defend the short midget people. And I will take that responsibility, just like Yoda would. Just like Yoda would. <laughs> yeah, I put in Yoda on that one, didn't I? Shout out to you, little Yoda motherfucker. He made money and I didn't. He did, didn't he? Um, we just gonna have our uh, wishes out to a couple of folks who are supposed to be here tonight. Uh, Cat Daddy, he had a uh, supposed to be here uh, today. We scheduled him for later on, I think, in uh, March. Uh, he had illness in the family. Uh, Matt Nagy was gonna step it up, take one for the team, but uh, he fell ill. Uh, but uh, filling in last minute, uh, we got Brandon. So what the fuck, come on over and have a few shots with us. Um, and we got Keanu here, uh, just, can't, just just came free earlier this week. Uh, we'll let you tell yeah. you, let him tell you his to, story. To uh, freedom. To, to freedom. freedom and to stay oh, yeah. free. Freedom. freedom. All right. <laughs> ah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that was pretty yeah. good. That one was really good. Jim. All right, man. Well, uh, I mean, we, I can start us off with a topic and let's talk about something. Well, I mean, he did just get. Yeah, free, he can come know. on. Yeah, he can tell a story yeah. about what's going on. Uh, Jump it off of that. He looks so like he explain. shanked a motherfucker recently. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's I mean, how he recently. Got, he's got uh, that stone cold killer look on his free. face. <laughs> Yeah, that beard just makes free. him look like a gangster in there. He led, him, he, <laughs> led, he led the mob in there is what he did. He did, he did. I did run wild for a while, but uh, after 10 months in, I mean, I've been there in the longest in the part that I was in, so just took over leadership, tried to run things in there. Act like an adult, didn't yeah. you? Tried to keep everything thing do, organized, it? make sure the yeah. police were staying out of y'all's way, where y'all could still yeah. do what y'all wanted to do. Exactly, keep everything honest in there. Uh, we was in lockdown cells, so you can go on off in the cubby if you want to do something off camera. Okay, cool. And so when there was fights, people yeah. and stuff like that, there's a lot of problems with my celly. Uh, fighting all the time and stealing stuff from people. So, Ooh, you know yeah, what I'm saying? stupid I, shit. I had to put him out. Honor among thieves now. Come on now, you don't steal. That's one what? thing you, you know what I mean? I mean, for real now, like if you're in jail, that's kind of a thing that you don't do, right? Am I right? Exactly. I've never been in jail. I've been a juvenile, but I've never been no, in jail. I, I spent a life. night in jail, but that's about it. That don't really count. I, I didn't have to give anything up or kick anybody's ass, so I feel like I See, I've seen out. people come in and, like, get stuff tucked and everything like that. Yeah. But, like, after so, so long when I get enough, because where I'm from, I'm from a little small town. Like, I remember one time I was in there for a couple, like, literally 13 months, and that was before I come to Nashville, right before I moved to Nashville. And we was watching a football game, and dude, if he wanted, because I'm a Cowboys fan, it was the Packers and the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, man, I was like, if you stop riding dick with Green Bay, if you win this game, you win the honey buns. Stop <laughs> acting like an idiot. So I set my leg up on the, on the bench right there, looking at the TV through the bars, like Captain Morgan, you know what I mean? Anyway, I, was, I just sat in there, and about that time, I felt a boom, son. Crack me. I mean, I fell probably 15, 20 feet, but what his problem was... He started talking shit. He almost knocked me out. Like, literally, I fell back, and I come to my senses. He was taking his shirt off. Boom, 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 boom. Literally, dude, the police was back there hauling. They're going to spray me, because they had to wait till the road cops got up there to stop this. Because every time I had him on the ground, every time they'd say, I'm going to spray you, I hit him. Because, dude, he sucker. He gave me six staples. 
Literally, like, and and like, he's like, you want? I was like, no, I don't want to press charges. I fail in y'all's motherfucking shitty ass jail. I was like, no way, whatsoever. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I went through some crazy shit in the county <laughs> jail I'm from. Yeah. Seen some crazy shit. I did too. I just watched uh, the guy that was talking about being in my cell with me. I watched him get stabbed six times, and uh, he ended up sending dude to the hospital. Though they took him to Vanderbilt, had to have reconstructive surgery on his eye. Oh shit! And everything. Fuck. Now they get stabbed with. Uh, he, it was a shank made out of a pen and it was sharpened down. It was Anything pretty, it was like pretty mean. Poked him about seven times. Damn, damn. It was vicious. It was. That's up. You make him out of a lot of things. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like yeah, in prison, you get some of the common, like a toothbrush would be probably the That's most toothbrush common. and, uh, and the sporks, like the, spork. the plastic yeah, spork yeah, they give us. Yeah. A spork? A spork, yeah. man. No, I've seen Deadly. They, they file them down real small. Yeah. Trying to poke they them in the ribs. Yeah, they'll go through you. Yeah, they'll go through you. I killed the dude I was in the cell with. But yeah, in prison you see knives though. You see homemade like knives, them shit. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like actual blades and everything. Yeah. When I pulled up Brushy Mountain, they were, see that day we, me and another boy, Josh McNally, and the reason they sent that boy with me is because that they didn't want to send me by myself and me holler it was a per like fucking just me, whatever. Anyway, they sent us down there. I thought we was going to rehab. I was like, yeah, we'll be high before the end of the day, Josh. You know what I mean? Cool, whatever, <laughs> da, da 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 They kept on going past Knoxville and I was like, where are we going? Hey, look here, we pulled up Rushy Mountain State Penitentiary, and that's when my balls yeah. dropped. I was, I was like, because it's like a castle. Like, it's like an old, like one of the top five penitentiaries yeah. in America. Yeah. Like, it's historical and stuff. And, like, it's so crazy to hear, like, the stories that them people would tell, <coughs> like the guards, literally. Like, they was like, and the first time I ever seen a guy, a girl, you know what I mean, type thing, I guess that he, she, him, or whatever, yeah. was playing volleyball. Like, me and my buddy Travis Smith walked up to the volleyball court. Old dude named Daniel, Daniel Crow was his name, but we called him <laughs> Danielle, literally. Had some oh, hoochie yeah. cutters on, his shirt tied up, long hair. Like, he'd been there for a while. He'd been through the Penn's interest since 20 years before this. Like, wow. he, he was gave a, up to be the bitch. No, he, yeah, but he was a killer. Like, that man right there, he you you didn't fuck with him, believe that. And I asked him one day, I said, why didn't you fuck with me when, you, when I first come in? He said, Shorty, you didn't come in and get nobody's business. He said, you stayed out of everybody's business. You got to know everybody. Everybody got to know you. And then we got, you know what I mean, everything was cool. Because, like, like, he was, like, and the dude, he would jump and spike that volleyball like a man, son, nuts just swinging out of hoochie cutters. <laughs> like, I mean, come on now. I mean, literally, like a man, son, and be like, got it! <laughs> like, it's so funny. Like, yeah, like, that's some crazy shit. Like, I learned how to play horseshoes. Like, you know what I mean, my tattoos, you know what I mean, got a little bit. Are all your tattoos jailhouse? No, tattoos? no. Like, some of them, like, that started out right there with a pick. Like, you know, a sharp and pick was. Yeah, it's the outline is how I got one started. One. But them are actually still started. Them are still picked in by my buddy in Unicoi County. Them bricks right there. Yeah. Yeah, them are actually still physically picked in with soot and, like, toothbrush yeah, and a circle. Wow. Yeah. Hey, how many years combined of all your time in prison, whether it be juvenile County or jail or and everything? All that, how, how much time have you spent in behind bars? 35. So if I had to say, I started when I was 35. When I started, I was 16. And I just start, stopped going to jail too about three years ago, pretty much. So, God, I've probably done 12 years day for day, either in juvenile or in wow. county jail or in prison or what back is county your jail. What's time in jail? Uh, about four and a half years. Four and a half years. How old are you? 24, about three, twenty-five. 25. Yes, you know, man. That's kind of the sweet spot to be kind of locked up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's good places and bad places. And you were locked up since you were 16? Well, on and off, you know what I mean? But it wasn't too many Because that's kind of a sweet spot yeah. to be locked up, too. Well, it's, it, the juvenile was worse than, you know what I mean, prison sometimes. Because we lived out in the wilderness in Deer Lodge, Tennessee, 421 Catfish Farm Road. I still remember that wow. address. Like, literally, we walked outside. We got to go home every two months for two, three days, I believe. But we walked out in the snow, the wind, and like, it was like seven miles we walked, no matter what a day, to either go to the shower house, up to eat. But two days a week, we had to cook out, like cook our own food. And if somebody burnt that fucking food, then you're fucked. You had to eat it, but most of the time we got cereal and Pop-Tarts and shit where nobody could burn breakfast and then give it a go at lunch, you know what I mean? And then at dinner, whoever can cook is going to cook no matter what. Like, I used to, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I went through that for 17 months and got out on my 18th birthday and caught a felony charge 
four months after that, and I took a charge one time for my buddy that run from the cops in my car. Me and him actually got away, and I went back to get my car two weeks later. Like, literally, it took us two weeks to find it because there wasn't no warrants for me. And when I went back to Elizabeth and to pick it up, the girl investigator handcuffed me and said to two girls and the guy in the back seat, done told on us, done told on being brothers and driving my car. All I had to do was tell on him, and I would go home. I was like, no, I was driving a 91, that's one time I was seeing a statement. I said, no, I was driving a 91 Integra, run from the lost old gas from the sick going from the Walmart, this and this and this. And she's like, you're really going to take a charge? I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. I was like, I was driving my own car. Took that charge, eight months, 23 days what I did. Well, five months into my sentence, I called home my best friend, Ben Brotherton, who I took charge, overdosed and died. Wow. Oh. Yeah, like, wow. so, you know what I mean? Like, that was, that was a, that was a... And you're a comedian? <laughs> exactly. I mean, I should be a fucking nutcase, you know what I mean? But, like, no, like, I, that's the reason I feel like... No, that makes you a comedian. Well, well, yeah. I mean, dude, it's I mean, the best thing. That's tragedy what, is tragedy really what is feel, the best, it feels. It, best yeah. comedy here like, really and, is. And, yeah. and that's what's so crazy, like I told you this a little bit last time. My father, we had everything. I didn't know what black people was until so I was 12 years old. Wow. I, I'm similar. I didn't know. I, well, I've never saw a black person in person. Until I moved to Tennessee and I was seven years old. Okay, well, see, I, I was like, see, I, I, I knew one. We had one in Roswell, New Mexico, where I lived. You a bunch of Puerto Ricans. See, we didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Puerto Ricans. But as far as like a black person, <laughs> no, no, I, didn't I, I didn't even know police existed. I didn't even know police existed. Like oh, I wow. see them on TV and stuff, and I watch basketball and stuff, but I didn't ever see black and white until I heard NWA. Yeah. I heard fuck the police when I was 12 years old when we moved from Flag Pond to Irwin. Like, like what are the police? And I was like, who is these people pissed off at these police people? Really? And then actually two years, three years later, two years, whatever, I started figuring out who these motherfuckers was. <laughs> and, I was like, the police, and I was too. like, these people are being honest, and I like these people. You know what I mean? Like, I love the old school rap. Nowadays, I think these kids get out there and they say a little too much of what they think they're doing or wish they was doing. But back in the day, y'all can agree that the old school rap was actually gangsters, talking, dope boys, yeah. and everybody that come up selling about, dope. Dope, yeah. dope Man is a true story, I'm pretty sure. All day. I mean, all, all that shit. It was hard for me to really get into the gangster rap. I didn't, I didn't get into it until years it. later. And at I the time, I, 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 I was, related to it at the time. Yeah. Because I, I grew up around that. But I wanted to stay away from that. I, I was like, I don't want to hear that. I didn't but really have anything later, to do with the game. Like, as far as like rap, well, like when the Beastie Boys kind of came Beastie out. Beastie Boys and all that too. But yeah, was like that kind of stuff was kind of cool. But I mean, especially when they started playing their instruments again. That's mm -hmm. when I really became a yeah, Beastie Boys. Yeah, when they came out with their instruments. But I, I couldn't really. But I really feel that rap. Is the same as punk rock, and I think that's probably why the Beastie Boys were able to go from being a punk rock band to playing to, a rap. to, to, to yeah. the rap and finding their their, their niche. Their niche and, was great too, but uh, I think that's I think rap really and, and 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 hardcore punk really came out at the same time, and I think you really could have went either way. It was just a way of um, the urban being able to to create music. Instead of having instruments, having what was around them, which was their LP players, yeah, and shit yeah. like that, and be able to, to, to create and, and, yeah. and make their own yeah. niche, and, and coming up with some you know positive and, and something new. But the gangster rap really didn't have; it didn't really hold me down. Like the first gangster rap I probably listened to was uh, was it uh, Too Short? Uh, Life's Too, too short. short. Yeah. Uh, too Short. Yeah. I remember too short. I wish it was a little bit taller. I wish it was a baller. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, I remember that. Short. Like you see Snoop Dogg on Dunkin' Donut commercials now. I yeah. saw that. I mean, I was, I saw I'm like, 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 wait a minute. I see. What the fuck? When I it picture just, me up for a minute. I picture Snoop Dogg being, yeah, being, yeah, got, being like, over the house. You know what I mean? Like being on like doggy Snoop style Dog. house. But you also understand he's doing. Uh, Every these time. shows with Martha Stewart. And his, oh, yeah. and, and his yeah, yeah, game yeah. show. Yeah. Have you, you watched right his game there? show? I I've i watched his though, game yeah. show. One time on his game show, one there was one question was like a. The word was balls, and the the guest had to guess what he was thinking. <laughs> and so, Snoop Dogg said, "Okay, what am I thinking?" And the guy, the word was balls, and the guy was like, "W balls." And he's like, no, that's not what I was thinking. And I don't remember what he was thinking because I was so fucked up that that's yeah, not what he was thinking. Yeah. I was like, 
No, Snoop, you're lying. You're lying because you're on TV. You're taking W balls because that's Anytime. funny. Yeah, Anytime that, that's, that, that was the thing. That's funny, though. Yeah, Snoop yeah, doing I, everything. Snoop on everything. Though. Because, I mean, I guess you got to adjust to the times, you know what I mean? Nowadays, Dunkin' Donuts is selling. You might as well jump on shit. You might as well. I mean, well, I mean, well, I mean you just, money to be made. It's money to be made. Money to be made, yeah. It's a lot of money. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a yeah, yeah, paycheck. Yeah. I mean, everybody needs a paycheck. You, you can't pay for insurance without it. But you, hell, even if you're older, you still got to pay for it somehow. Yeah, yeah, I can't pay for no insurance fucking now, let alone fucking. You know what I mean? That's why I'm trying to do comedy. And put, somebody asked me one time, so Shorty, what if you got rich tomorrow? What would what would you do to give back? I was like, I would give back to kids that didn't think they had a chance until they moved out of the city or town, little town or the town they was from. Yeah. Like if you get in trouble somewhere, you can't stay in that same place. You cannot stay in that same place. Like, I don't get no trouble down here, and I'm thankful. You know what I mean? Like, I'm thankful for Nashville. Like, you know what I mean? Because it's helped me a lot. It's taught me how to grow up. It's taught me how to be a man. I still deal with issues every single day, just like every fucking body in America. Everybody does. You know what I mean? But if I get rich, I'd like to give back to kids that, that might not have none. Or, like, just walk in a Burger King and me want a milkshake, and there's 50 people in there, and I'm like, hell, pay for everybody's fucking meal. You know what I mean? Like yeah, that, that, like that would great. make me feel good. You know what I mean? Make me feel good. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's just something that I've I learned from somebody, and I've kept that. That's something. That's the only thing that that man ever taught me. And I was like, yeah. And what did my daddy do? My daddy's taught me a lot. <laughs> like literally, like I was telling you, he lost everything twice and come back both times. Like yeah, I already took 1.6 million dollars in assets and 68 thousand dollars in cash from us at one time. So my daddy went wire wire on somebody. Now you hinted at that last time, yeah. but I don't think you really went into full yeah. detail. What it was is that they wanted my father to wear a wire on somebody, and my daddy was like, no, because he was kind of his best friend's sister in a way. He was kind of somebody we know real good. And my daddy owned this convenience store in the middle of town, and my daddy was like, like everybody knowed my father. And my father, like, knowed everybody, knowed everything about everybody, because everybody liked my father, knowed it between you and between y'all. You know what I mean? But anyway, they didn't he, they didn't like when Dad told them no. You know what I mean? So they went and called the IRS because they know somehow that Dad did it. Because Dad couldn't read or write, and, and he didn't really know what he was doing on taxes. He just really didn't. He didn't know no better. No, wait a minute. He had how much in assets that he couldn't read? They took they took they took 160 million, 100, 1.6 million dollars in assets and 68 thousand dollars cash from us because he wouldn't wear a wire on somebody because they could probably called the IRS on him. Yeah, because he wouldn't do what they said. Because the taxes, he was fucked up on the taxes because he didn't know how to do them, really. What, what, did, your, what did your yeah. father do? My father owned a convenience store ever since I was young until he went to federal penitentiary and come out and started. He drives for a pallet company now. Yeah, he drives for one of his best friends back home. He still lives back home and does great. Ain't, ain't on no dope. Takes my young goes to church every Sunday. So was that up at one time? Yeah, my father got caught with 68 guns, a grenade, and a quarter ounce of meth, and went to federal penitentiary for five years. Wow, all because he went to drop down on somebody. Yeah, there was like 68 wow. people wrote statements on my daddy. You know what I mean? And I mean, and, and, and you put. That's a lot of people, though. Unicoi County, like I, you know what I mean? Like Unicoi County, somebody told me to let it go. You know what I mean? I've let a lot of it go, but I'll tell you like this, if I do get to be put on stage one day, I've only got these certain amount of people right now that goes with me that will never have to work again as long as I don't have to work again because I want the people around me to run everything. Yeah. I want them to do everything, but Irwin is, I just, I just, I don't know, I just think that I just should just let it go and say, you know what I mean, if I do get rich, to build them a fucking whatever they want there. Yeah. Make them mad. Take care of the community. I mean, Always I feel the same the way, because, but they first. didn't take care of none of us. But give back, that's how you give back. And I feel the yeah. same way. I yeah. feel yeah. like revenge is sweeter served on a dish instead of honey, honey instead of vinegar. Yeah, I mean, to the honey. To the honey. To the honey. Yeah. I'm gonna slide by. I'm gonna turn mine off if that's all right. Unless all you right. just want to hit that stop button right I there. I can do it. I can hit do that it. black button right there, and you can hand it to me. So one of the reasons why you're on here is that you are a comedian.